Hello Drummers and Other Creatures. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some extra components for the Purdy Shuffle. I recently made a video about how to play the Purdy Shuffle with what I consider to be the essential parts of the groove, but there are a couple of things that I left out deliberately, um, just because you don't need to take on everything all at once. Um, so in this video, we're gonna add a ghost note after the back beat. So we're gonna have a loud snare drum followed by a soft one, uh, which, has a certain mechanical process involved uh, and we're also going to add some open hi-hat stuff as well and that should give you I guess the full tool set or at least a, a good chunk of the tool set for messing around with this groove which we we all know and love don't we so let's have a listen to what that sounds like Something more or less like that anyway. First things first, the backbeat ghost note. What we need to, to do here is to play a nice loud snappy sound for our backbeat and then a ghost note to occur afterwards. And the efficient way to do that is to let the ghost note just come off the energy from the backbeat, but you need to learn how to control it a little bit without putting too much pressure on the stick in a nice relaxed way. You wanna soak up the energy from the um, first note, the loud note, and then let the other one kind of fall out of your hand if you like. I'm letting my hand hold the whole stick I'm very aware of the main sort of contact point with the stick that I have between my thumb and index finger. I've got the other three fingers wrapped around the stick. Um, and then I kind of, I just allow the, the stick enough bounce there to produce that soft ghost note. Now, particularly in Babylon Sisters by Steely Dan, you can hear Purdy playing this ghost note very consistently. And it sounds exactly like the ghost notes he's playing in the other parts of the groove. It's beautifully consistent, and that's the kind of thing that we, we want to get. But first things first, I would just practice that stroke on its own. Um, there's a book called The Breakbeat Bible, and the guy there describes that as a controlled stroke, when you throw down a loud note and then produce a softer note off the back of that. I don't know if that's a common term, but uh, I, I know the, the term used for other things as well. So, you yeah, know, labels, eh? Now, once you feel like that that's, that's working reasonably well, you can bring in the groove element, but not the ghost notes, or the other ghost notes, in other words. We're gonna play the 16th note shuffle, or the halftime shuffle, whatever you wanna call it, with a basic bass drum pattern, with the hi-hat pattern as is, and then we're only gonna play the backbeat with the ghost note that follows that. So you can sit with that for as long as you need to make that little combination of a loud and a soft note sound nice and smooth. Um, if you're kind of too tense, you're going to find that there might be a tendency to buzz, you know, just to miss the ghost note altogether. So you need to have a little bit of relaxation in your hand. If you're too relaxed, you'll find that the uh, backbeat bounces too high and then the ghost note will be loud won't be timed right. So play, be patient. When that's starting to feel good, the next thing to add is the ghost note that precedes the backbeat, which would be on the end of the second group of 
triplets. So we have one and uh, two and uh, and on that and we're gonna lift up the stick with an upstroke and then play down into the drum off the back of that. Um, I'm counting this as eighth notes. I know I said, I, I think of this as a 16th note groove, but it's much easier to count the eighth note triplets. So that's how we're referring to this, uh, to the counting here anyway. All right, so that, I'm waffling. Let's try one and a two. Okay. I'm kind of exaggerating the movement. You don't really need so much arm and stuff happening. I, I can just manage mostly with my hand, actually. But notice I'm, I'm doing this without the rest of the groove. I'm just focusing on my snare drum stroke to start with. And it can be quite sensible to isolate these kind of movements and get used to them. Once you feel satisfied that you've tried that a little bit, bring back the shuffle with the bass. Sit with it. Just play that for a bit. You don't have to rush to the next stage, but when you feel ready for it, you can add some more ghost notes. Uh, maybe we could add the ghost note on the fourth triplet, so at the end of the bar. And then we can add the first ghost note as well on the middle of the first triplet. There you go, you've got now all the ghost notes, including the one that comes immediately after the snare backbeat. Um, once you have that, you can then start adding the bass drum in, in more configurations. So I was just playing the bass on the, the one, essentially, or the one and three, depending on which way you're counting this. Um, but uh, go and look at the other video and I, I explain how to, to expand the uh, bass drum patterns there. But once all of that's there, then try and bring the bass drum variations. Until then, be as patient as you can. Good, so that covers that. Now, before I go on to the open hi-hats, um, I wanted to let you know or alert you to the fact that I am a drum teacher, <laughs> believe it or not, and I'm offering one-on-one uh, -on -one drum tuition. So if you feel like you've got any needs, that you want someone to help you develop your drumming skills, maybe you're teaching yourself and you need somebody to observe and make some suggestions, or even if you just want to get started with the drums, and you'd like some help with that, you can get in touch with me using the contact details in the description box below. And uh, I'm available to teach people, whether you're based in London, but also available to the wider world, thanks to the miracle of Zoom and Skype and other such wonderful technologies. So while they're still around, please feel free to get in touch with me. Otherwise, if you're finding these videos useful, uh, you can donate by um, going to buy me a coffee, that was the thing, and uh, throw some money my way if you feel like you'd like to support this channel. But bear in mind, I'm offering all these videos with no strings attached, so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Now, let's look at the hi-hat opening and closing thing. Did I say something about subscribing? Like and subscribe, by the way. Don't forget that thing. Yes, right, back to the hi-hat. Opening the hi-hat. Uh, in both of the, the, the Purdy numbers, in Home at Last and uh, Babylon Sisters, and there might be others I don't know of, but uh, he plays open hi-hats in a sort of sequence, sometimes on all, on all the ands or the third partial of the triplet. Uh, so I think it's, it's reasonably sensible to start that way, as in doing all the open hi-hats first and seeing how we get on with that and then being a bit more selective. Now bear in mind, 
any explanation I give, it's not the only way to go about doing things. And whenever someone says, this is the way to do something, I would take that with a pinch of salt. So this is the approach that I'm choosing uh, to address this, but you could go around it another way if this doesn't work for you. So bear that in mind. Um, but let's look at, I'm gonna play the shuffle. And now instead of counting all the triplets, I'm just gonna count one and two and three and four and shuffled eights. Uh, and I'm gonna open the hi-hat on all the ands. And when we say open the hi-hat, it's only a very slight loosening of the cymbals that you need. And that on its own takes a little bit of uh, experience and, and judgment to find out what really works there. You, you might find that it, that quite a small twitch of the foot is enough to give you that slightly shoop shoop pea soupy sound. There's kind of a world of stuff in there. Now, you may notice that that means that the, the hi-hat foot is gonna be playing on the counts. So it's one, two, three, four. Let's see if we can just get that to work um, without the ghost notes first. We're just gonna play the shuffle pattern with the back beat. So, you can try that until that feels really comfortable. After that, hopefully you're getting the, the general idea, we can add a ghost note or two. Let's add the backbeat ghost note first and we can work our way into all the stuff. Add the preceding ghost note before the backbeat. And then one at a time, but I'm just gonna throw it in there. We'll do all the ghost notes together. And as before, once that's feeling comfortable, you can mess around with the bass drum patterns and even work on, as I said, the specific patterns from Babylon Sisters and Home at Last and whatever, whatever you fancy playing there. The end result, the thing we're trying to achieve here is to have at least a moderate amount of freedom to use the open hi-hat sounds and use the ghost notes in a shuffle context and use the bass drum and to be able to kind of mix and match at your leisure, according to your good taste, shall we say. And that means that you can play a half-time shuffle or a 16th note shuffle, whatever you want to call it, and add open hi-hats, add ghost notes and take them out. You don't have to always play the full uh, the full pattern endlessly, right? You can you can add ghost notes. So you just, there, there's lots of songs where there's a 16th note shuffle pattern and the drummer's adding some ghost notes here and there, some open hi-hats here and there, varying the bass drum and so on and so forth. It doesn't have to be the constant uh, Purdy Shuffle style thing. So it'd be something like mm, mm. slightly surprised by what I did there, but you get the idea. You can just play that basic shuffle pattern and add and remove ghost notes as you like. Add and remove open hi-hats as you like. At the end of the day, it's whatever sounds good for the music you're playing. And while there's some sort of generally accepted uh, ideas there, it's down to taste and experience a lot of the time. 
So there you go. That sort of wraps up all the elements now, I think, that will allow you to play the, the Purdy Shuffle, especially as far as the hi-hat's concerned. Do I need to make a video covering some of the stuff you can do on the ride? Or can you work it out for yourself? If you enjoyed this and found it useful, maybe let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me cover the, the ride uh, specifically. Um, I don't know, see how it goes. Uh, meanwhile, thank you very much for watching this as always. Another reminder to like, subscribe, and leave me comments, and let me know what you think. If you've tried before to ask me about some topic or other, you'll know that I'm reasonably receptive to making a video if there's something that you're interested in. So that's something I'd really like to hear about. I'm always looking for ideas of what to do. Meanwhile, you can go and practice.